Hello and welcome once again to Chow Down, the digital online mega improv experience. I'm Overton and I'm in a new location. I'm in a corner in my new apartment up in Mankato, Minnesota, here at school because it's back to school time. So, Chow Down will be celebrating back to school with a few stories about school, things we've learned, and we'll be playing some voicemails from you. Some of them are from me, but most of them are from you about things you learned too late in life, embarrassing things that you thought were true but got to not be true. And you can still call and leave voicemails. The number's in the description for it. Uh, I think it's 515-690-6069. Thank you to Paul for that phone number. And we also have some amazing graphics, to, thanks to uh, Matt, who you can check out online as well. Also has a podcast with his lovely girlfriend, Laura, and I don't think that they're doing episodes right now, but you can still catch up on the old episodes or see Matt's work at Teehee's Comedy Club. So uh, without further ado, we have an amazing special guest opening for us this month. They were wondering if you could just post in the Facebook chat, give them any word, a random word, and that will inspire them to tell story time, a story, a uh, true story, or maybe true. Uh, from one of them, and that will inspire a improv set from the Pixie Cut. So, labored it already too much, but please give it up for the Pixie Cuts. Hey, everybody! <laughs> oh. What is up? So, Hi. we're the Pixie Cuts. Uh, we are from... Memphis and Washington, D.C. Uh, we are going to be doing a fun form called the Armando. And like Tim was telling you, we need a word, a one word suggestion. And then we are going to make up a whole bunch of stuff based on that one word. Well, actually based on a story that one of us is going to tell you based on that one word. And... Looking for some suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So a little history about us while we're waiting for those suggestions. Um, Laurel and I here in Memphis, uh, we took some classes with Will Himes, who is uh, based out of L.A. And uh, in one of those classes, we met the lovely Miss Alyssa. And uh, he hosted an exhibition for three player uh, groups to do various scenes. And so we got together, we did a scene and then boom, we got a group going. Uh, so that's a little bit about us. We each have various improv backgrounds. Laurel is amazing. Did Harold nope. in Chicago. I did random improv at Pennsylvania Renaissance Fairs. Alyssa has been doing improv for a whole year. Is that right? Oh, just, yeah, a little over a year. Ago. Yeah. A baby. She's a baby. Baby, you know, baby improv. All right. Do you have any suggestions? I can't see any because I'm doing a yeah, watch party on my... Oh, wait. I've got... I have one. I've that I can see on my watch party. I, um, I've got kayak. kayak. Like K-A-Y-A-K. That palindrome of a word. I have a story about kayaks. Got a story. All right. Story time. Story time with Alyssa. Oh, there we are. So uh, every year since I um, graduated college, um, I wanted to do something fun to celebrate my birthday. My birthday is in September, so it's still warm out and in DC, in DC. And so I said, what is more fun than doing than kayaking? Because it gets just some physical activity and it um, you know, builds camaraderie and my friends from different friend groups come together and don't uh, know who don't know each other before, and then boom, by the end of the day, we're all laughing and joking and making fun of me. So, um, for first year with this, uh, two of my uh, dear friends who now have both left Washington, D.C., uh, their names are Adam and Brady, those are their real names, uh, were in a, a two-person kayak together and decided to just boat bump me uh, the whole time. And the whole, uh, after, the whole uh, kayaking uh, adventure on the Potomac River was just them speeding up with, at full speed. 
mind you, they've never kayaked before, <laughs> to boat bump me, and they sent us flying through the water. And um, it was really fun, except uh, I just wanted like a nice leisurely day, you know, of, of fun and frivolity. And it turned into a weird competition <laughs> of everybody boat bumping and racing each other. And I don't have a lot of upper body strength, as you can tell. So uh, I and the person who I don't remember is in the kayak with me, we're just struggle busting the whole time. But needless to say, it was a very fun time. And unfortunately, due to COVID, can't do that this year. But there's always next year because rivers don't go anywhere. And that's my story about kayaks. I have a question. Yes. Are there any scary and or dangerous creatures living in that river? No, but the river is really gross. So don't swim in it. <laughs> gross river. Okay. Good to All know. right. Good to know. Um, uh, so, uh, the, the bumping that was just for fun, does that happen every time or just that time? Well, uh, it happened every year. And then Adam moved, he went to grad school outside of DC. So he was really in charge of the boat bumping. So Brady, um, was, uh, just, uh, took a leisurely, um, uh, kayak paddle, took a leisurely paddle and it was much calmer. Uh, there were there was no competition the past uh, kayak, but it felt like something was missing a little bit. Gotcha. All right. All right. Yeah, okay. Psst. Hey, Bart. Hey. What? Okay, okay look. What? We're hanging off this cliff, right? Yeah. We got what? Hundred feet below us. I'm seeing. I'm thinking. We swing over and bump Tim. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, you first. Okay. Well, oh, oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna okay. Well, he's kind of far away. Um, so hey I'm gonna um huh? Okay, okay, okay. He can't hear us. All right, I'm gonna kind of scooch over towards you, and then what I need you to do is kind of push me like a swing so that I can get all the way over to him and then bump him. Okay. Okay. Let's, it seems. Let's just do it. We're I'm, gonna do I it. I kind of want to see what happens, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ready, man? You ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we, okay. I'm gonna. I'm back. gonna. Okay. 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 Here we go. So I'm oh, gonna. I'm gonna come day. over, and we're we're gonna sweep. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, friends. How's it going? What lovely are you doing? Day. Lovely day outside, isn't it? Yeah. What are you doing? Leisurely paddle. Leisurely paddle. That's that's awesome. That's great. Just leisurely. We got a witness now. We can't do it. We can't do it. We got a witness. We can't do it. What do what? Nothing. We're just we're just rock climbing here with our friend Tim. Don't worry about it though. Yeah. You, you just keep paddling. Just keep going like faster. Oh look yeah. at the little flabby arms she's got. <laughs> she has little flabby arms. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's gone. Okay, okay she's right. gone. Okay, here we go. Okay. All right. Now, this time you. I'm gonna I'm gonna really do it. I'm gonna, oh, hold on a second. Should I just bump him or should I like grab him and like hold on to him? Oh well, I mean if you want to add a little bit of flourish to it, I would grab him, hold on to him, and okay. swing back over here. Okay, yeah, I'll bring him over. Tim is scared of heights so hard. He will pee so himself. Scared. That'll be hilarious. Oh my God. That would be <laughs> the best thing. You need to get your phone out. You need to get your phone out so well, that you can you record back. it. What? Well, I got to pull you back and push you and then I got to grab the phone. Out. I don't think it's all going to happen in one fell swoop here. Why don't you just one arm it? I will. All right, here we go. Okay, you ready? Ready? One, yeah. one, one, two, two, three, three. Ah! <laughs> what was that all about? Uh, uh, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I didn't get any of it on the phone. I gave it bark. <laughs> Sorry. Hurt my neck. <laughs> uh, 
I can't pick it up, Lucy. I can't. <laughs> Why can't you pick up? I can't pack up the wine bottle. <laughs> Too heavy. I mean, <laughs> we're in the middle of a supermarket. We can't just like stand here like this the whole time. Get somebody <laughs> hot to help us. <laughs> okay. I'll try it. I'll just try it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I believe in you, girlfriend. What? I believe in you, girlfriend. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's, I love you. Okay. I love you more. Stop it. I'm trying to pick this up, and you're going to make me cry. I'm already just <laughs> giving you words of encouragement to lift up the heavy wine bottle. I'm... My biceps are, they're weak when I cry and get mushy. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know, but your biceps are so cute on your body. I know, aren't they? And I love the way your triceps look. Like, they don't even yeah. bat wing or anything. I can okay. always count on you for specific compliments like that. <laughs> you, you got it. I'm really into how people look. Oh, my God. <laughs> I will have to say, your taste in wine bottles, not wine, just wine bottles, is superb. And I know while you can't pick them up most of the time, it's just so nice to look at the bottle in the store with you. Oh, that's gonna make me cry. Oh, I can't pick no. this up. That's of your awesome makeup job. Oh no. Okay, all right. I'm gonna hold it together. Okay, okay. The Stella Rosa. Okay. Oh my, uh -huh. oh, you look like a baby di dinosaur. Oh. But not, <laughs> not ugly, right? No, no, it's cute. Cute. Before they get ugly. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get the Stella Rosa. I thought we were going to ask for like a hot guy to help us. Yeah, I need a hot guy. Oh my God. Hi, did uh, somebody say they needed a hot guy? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Hi. yeah. Oh, wow. Hi, ladies. Look, yeah. let me squeeze your arm. Oh, yeah, please. <laughs> please do. It's nice and bulgy. Oh my god! I think Your you arms. I'm gonna. Like pigs oh and my god! I find that strangely attractive. Well, we don't do any work, but we're trying to pick up this Stella Rosa, and uh, we just want to drink some wine. Yeah, we just yeah. need to pick that up. Yeah. Put it in our cart, and if you we'll do that, one. We'll yeah, we'll invite you to our pool party, which is just the two of us because. Yeah. No one else ever comes. No. I'm going to put that in your cart so hard, you don't even know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I don't think he's talking about the Stella Rosa. <laughs> I know. I don't think so either. <laughs> no, I'm totally talking about the Stella Rosa. I mean, it's really heavy. It is gonna <laughs> it's going to okay. really hard. <laughs> You're really hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> You're good looking. Thank you. So are you, ladies. All right. Let me, <laughs> let me grab this wine for you real quick. Here, hold on a second. Let me just pick it up. Uh, I just, you know... <gasps> got it. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> we take you wherever we go to lift things for us. Yeah. I mean, if you pay me, I can ask Daddy. Yeah, ask your Daddy. <laughs> okay, hi everybody! Welcome to kayaking lessons. Now, today we're going to talk about the proper way to adequately tip somebody over in a kayak when you need them out of the kayak. Now this is a little lesser known technique because most of the times we want to start kayaks, but can anyone tell me the three major situations when you would want somebody out of your kayak? Yes. They're your mortal enemy and you must remove them from your place. That's right, mortal enemies, that's one. Anybody know two? Yes. The, uh... They farted. Farty. Absolutely. Get out of there. Okay. <laughs> and the third one. Does anyone know? Yes. You want to sure. test their swimming abilities. <laughs> you got to know if they can swim or not. That's exactly right. Yes. I would like to request to the class that no one push me out of their kayak because I can't swim. That I'm is a, a very reasonable swimmer. request. Unfortunately, though, everyone will get pushed out of their boat. So you better learn to swim while I'm talking. Okay. Yeah, wait. So, 
it's, it's going to be super exciting. So the first thing you need to do is if you are not in the kayak itself, you need to take the kayak that you are in and just jam that sucker right underneath it, makes it flip over, you're good to go. Now it gets a little trickier if you are inside the kayak. What you do is you kind of position yourself with your arms on the thing, everybody your arms on the thing, on the sides of the thing, on the, the boat, I guess you would call it. And you're just going to kind of like do one of these. It's going to make the other person lose their balance and boom. They're out of the kayak. Any questions? If you do it harder, does that make them go faster out of the boat? It really does. Very, awesome. very good observation. Yes, yes. Where can I find the life jacket? Life jackets have to be purchased and brought on your own time, sweetie. I brought three because I also can't swim, but I'm prepared. Now, you see Laurel, Alyssa here, she brought three life jackets. Maybe if you're nice to Alyssa, she'll loan you one or a half of them. Okay, okay. No. So what I want everyone to do, go ahead, put on your life jacket or jackets. So can I borrow one, Alyssa? Alyssa, can I borrow one? <laughs> okay. How nice. <laughs> Laurel, what do you say to Alyssa? Thanks, you saved a life today. Ew. Now we know. Now we know. We're all going to go down to the water. We're all going to walk single file down to the water, down to the boat. We're first going to test dumping each other out on the gravel first before we do it in the water. Does that sound good to everybody? Yes. Uh, wonderful. wonderful. I will see you down at the shore. Ugh. It's tradition, bitches. It's tradition. <laughs> yeah. Somebody has to lose a finger. Totally. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, man. Can't you see? Like, it is the greatest thing in the world. Function? That's not what I signed up for. I thought, like, tradition, like... Going to the same restaurant and ordering the same food. No, not that's not how I wanted to celebrate our friend anniversary. We're Kappa Kappa Gammas, bitch. Of course we're going to cut off our fingers. Yeah. Is that in the bylaws? <laughs> yeah. I don't Look, know. I'm missing this one. Did you get that Let's one? Let's see where ring on it. Yeah, I'm wearing a ring on it. Just an oven. <laughs> which one, which finger do you not use at all? That's my pinky. Quick. My left. Being a pinky. All right. Pinky. A lot of people choose that. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to do, are we going to chop it off her? Are we going to get it off her? Are we going to chase it <laughs> off her? What are we going to do? Question, question. Can yeah. I um, get some anesthesia so I don't feel the pain? I mean, as, as a new pledge, as a new pledge, um, I didn't really want to be in this. This wasn't my top choice sorority to join. Uh, and if I knew this, I would get uh, lose a, a ligament uh, ahead of time. I probably wouldn't have even chosen to do, do Greek life. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, since we weren't your top choice, I think I got a Tylenol floating around at the bottom of my purse. <laughs> you can have that. What do you think this big old gallon of Jack Daniels is for? I thought <laughs> it was just a decoration. No, we're going to butt chug it. <laughs> yeah, but chug it. Yeah, <sighs> we get the pledges to do the hose work, mm -hmm. and then we just dump that thing right up your keister. And you don't have to worry about alcohol poisoning because after we chop your finger off, you're going to the emergency room anyway. Don't pump your stomach. I mean, yeah. I guess it's killing two birds with one stone. So I mean, I do appreciate the. It's a tradition. It's tradition. It's Streamlined um, outlook of your sorority. That's they right. used to do this in ancient Greece. Yep. Socrates. Yeah. Well, I am a history major, and I do appreciate history. So, yeah. so there you go. So we're going to yeah. take your pinky. Uh, we got to figure out how we're going to do it. I think uh, just maybe getting it hung up in, in wire or something. You know, like, I don't know. That's how I lost mine. 
Like the Godfather. Yeah, we, we just twist some wire around it and then pinch it off like that. I mean, it, yeah. Can I say goodbye to it first? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So Thanks. Goodbye. Can I have a moment? We'll oh, give oh, you a yeah. moment. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. This is it. We had a good run of uh, 19 years together. But what, right now, you've become obsolete because joining the sorority is more important than you. And I just hope you have a, a good time in pinky heaven. That's all I want for you. And uh, yeah, good luck. <gasps> that was right. beautiful. That was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. I need a moment. Oh, oh I didn't okay. get to say Here. goodbye to this guy. I didn't oh. either. Well, you should have asked your the upper uh, classmate of your, the sorority, ladies. <laughs> Do you want me to give you a moment? <laughs> okay, hold on. You first. Finger. I miss you. It's just not the same. I can't be friends anymore. <laughs> Writing's a bitch. So is using the computer. Oh, God. I hope you're having a good time partying it up with the other digits of those dead people. Drop me a line sometime. I'm good. Dear ring finger. I will never get to wear a promise ring again without it falling off. And I'm real sad about it. <laughs> I hope that you found another hand. <laughs> another hand. To be one of the five, one of the your Jackson five. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Really beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay. We cut to the severed off digits in uh, Finger Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, did you hear that? We're free! We're free! Yeah! They miss us! They miss us real oh, fast! Let's go to let's go get some margaritas! Yeah, man! Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tradition. Tradition. Tradition! 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 Woo! <laughs> 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 Keep it. And that's our show. There you go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you to Chowdown for having us. Yes, thank you, Chowdown. Super but we're not finished. We will be back. That's yes. what that means. Sorry. <laughs> that's right. They will be back in just a moment. Keep it going for the Pixie Cuts. We're going to take a quick break. You have a moment to call the hotline and leave a voicemail. And we'll be right back with Chowdown.
Should we all hide and come up? Oh, yeah. Right. It's too late for that, Jill, because oh. now <laughs> we are live with Chowdown. Oh, hey. <laughs> Hi, guys. I didn't see you there. Yeah, hey, Tim. Hi, everybody. Hey, Tim. Keep it going for the pixie cuts. That was amazing. Thank you again so much for doing the show. Excellent find, Tim. Most funny. I don't know how I find such great people, but I like to think that I don't do anything and they find me. <laughs> we're here with Chowdown, and we've been getting your voicemails. Thank you so much for calling the number and leaving suggestions for the next bit that we'll be doing right after this set. But until then, we will also be performing in Armando, just like you saw with the Pixie Cuts. And we're looking for suggestions that are maybe a little more specific to school. So if you could post in the Facebook chat a word that makes you think of school, school times, back to school, anything related like that. And that will inspire a true story from one of our improvisers, which we will then use to perform some improv. So we'll be monitoring the chat now. How is everyone doing though? Having a good time? Our power is back? We survived the Durade show? Yeah. How long did it take it's us getting, to figure out it was an inland earlier. hurricane? Dude, that was wild. Like severe thunderstorms happen and it's yeah. sort of like, mm, I, I guess I just shouldn't stand under a tree. But this was like, oh, seek shelter immediately means seek shelter immediately. Well, it kind of reminded me of when I like when I went to California for the first time, I was like 15 and they were like, OK, everybody knows what to do when there's an earthquake. And I was like, wait, well, no, I, that, I do not know what to do when there's an earthquake. Like, that is something I don't know. What, what, what do we do? Let's do that um, scene. Because, like, I know the tornado thing. Anneli! Anneli, we got an earthquake! Wait, wait, when? When's it coming? Right now? It's happening right now! Can't you feel it? <laughs> do I, don't you know? You gotta go use the, the proper... No, you don't go outside. You gotta find a door frame. Find a door frame. Why in the basement? Where are you from? I, I live in Tornado Alley. And that was that scene. So I, I find a door. <laughs> <laughs> We're still getting some suggestions from the chat. <laughs> we got a lot of suggestions. You guys seen oh, these? Yeah. Recess, yes. gym class, lunchbox. Uh, never having to go shopping as I wore uniforms all grade school and high school. Oh, that's, that's a good one. Study hall. Do these inspire any true stories? Okay, I have, I have a story about uniforms, kind of. Okay, okay. I'll just go for it, you know. Go for it. So, um, I'll do another camp story. But, um, <laughs> so, uh, obviously, if, you, long, if you're a long-time listener... Of, and follower of uh, Chowdown, you know that I have a lot of camp stories. And we had a big camp list of what to bring. We They used to have uniforms, they don't anymore, but you have to wear like white on Sundays. And they would have like a long list, like, you know, bring eight socks, uh, bring a flashlight, you know, bring swimsuits. Well, um, they would get down to the bottom and um, my mom would start laughing and I was like you know I'm like nine and I'm like mom like what's so funny and she's like it was uh it, it said it was supposed to say after bite you know like what you would put on a bite like after a mosquito bit you to like kind of soothe that bite but they evidently misspelled after bite and um it said after birth <laughs> and <laughs> Um, so my mom was just like rolling and of course I'm nine. She can't like share this laughter with someone. Cause I was like, well, what, what's after birth? You know, like, is it me? Like I'm the after, like, like <laughs> I'm the result of the birth. Um, but now we all know, and Paul will soon know very well what after birth is. Um, oh God. So that is my... <laughs> <laughs> that is my story of uh, bringing afterbirth to camp where they had camp uniforms. <laughs> A 
It's the result. It's the result of the placenta. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's. I saved it. I saved a little bit from our third, our third born. It. I put it in the freezer, right, right by the the first first year wedding cake top that we've got. What? Well, uh, I know you don't know a lot about like female hygiene, but no. anything that I can make out of a make into a mask, I can do it. Uh, do you want to feel? Feel your face? Yeah, feel it's 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 soft. It's kind of spongy. It's full of progesterone and estrogen. Okay, I feel like this is a good time to bring this up. Um, you're gross. <laughs> Sorry, that was... <laughs> okay, I didn't know you were coming home so soon. I try to do all these female type of hygiene taking steps when I'm by myself. Who's no, no. to be out here hunting? The, the showers, I appreciate. The showers, I love it. Um, the deodorant that you wear and have worn, great. Keep doing that. The the other things like the mixing of mud and your earwax for a, a late night mask, that's, that's where I'm having the problems. Is that weird? Yeah. I feel like... I feel like this is a normal reaction that I'm having, and I feel like you're confused. I want to thank you both for coming in today, for being able to be open and discuss your problems. It's a safe place for all of you to be able to share thoughts and your feelings. I am an independent, objective observer. I'm not here to judge, pass judgment on the things you say, and the things that you say in this room will be safe here, be repeated elsewhere. So... What seems to be the problem? So, my spouse has been... Hang on, I just gotta do a mask real quick. <laughs> Wait. I z I'm sorry. This might be a little... Per I know you said that you're remaining objective and you're like a third party. What is that that you put on your face? Oh, this? Dr. Schneider, can I touch? Can I touch your face? Yeah, please. I couldn't help but to look across the desk and just see how. How? Oh my God! I get this uh, powdered placenta. You just add your own body moisture, and it forms a paste. Really healthy. It's got a lot of the vitamins, no. progesterone, estrogen. I'm sorry. That, that, I shouldn't be doing this during the session. What were What were you about to say? Hey, your face is like soft, like a like a mushroom. Yeah. Thank you. Like a shiitake mushroom. Like you know, I'm not supposed to have to... favorites, but you're you're getting up there. Wait, you said you were... I have several questions. Actually, you know what? I don't. All right. This, I Why don't, don't we move forward with the healing? <laughs> to get to the healing. Okay. I've got All some right. stuff here. Um, no. Uh, Dr. Snyder. Oh, yeah. Dr. Snyder, the Hi. the shipment is in um, for your um, your placenta uh, shipment from the yeah. hospital. Right. Um, Would you like me to chop it up? No, in the just back um, for you. Give it. <laughs> um, it's 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 Dr. Snyder. It's been it's been ten minutes since I've since I've touched a face. Uh, can I? Can I touch? Can I touch your face? It's been ten minutes. No. Just, um, my, my nurse, face? would you give us a second, nurse? Okay, You're, yeah, I'm I mean, gonna give you guys uh, a long while. <laughs> yeah, hey, help, help me with these boxes. Oh, oh yeah, I'll I'll help. Um, sweetie, love of my the life, light of my sky. <laughs> um, we, I would like. A divorce. 
Great, because I was thinking the exact same thing. Scene. We have lots of other suggestions in the Facebook chat for more stories related to school that will help inspire a true story from our improvisers. We have study hall. We have getting detentions for public show, public show of affection in high school. Anyone show any public shows of affection in high school? Maybe get a detention. I have I have a story. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> so, um, I was in band in high school. Uh, shout out band nerds. Uh, shout out band kids and Boo. theater kids. Boo. And uh, after marching band, uh, I went to a rural school. And our marching band uniforms, I think like most marching band uniforms, are extremely uncomfortable and were wool and hot and gross. And uh, so all of us had this idea that we would like take off our marching band pants and like make funny faces in our underwear. And someone took a picture of this. <laughs> and uh, my buddy proceeded to upload it to his school like his his files in the school's computer so that he could print it later for whatever reason because we thought it was funny because <laughs> we were high school boys and we were stupid um the problem was that when he selected the printer to print it to he printed 10 copies at an elementary school <laughs> <laughs> So this printer in the library of the elementary school got 10 uh, black and white, poorly, poor quality pictures of all of us boys in our boxers. Um, so then we had to go to the principal's office and address this where he proceeded to threaten us that we were going to like get on the sex offender registry and that like we were going to like have to call the police or something that we were harassing people. And the best was that he, he insulted me personally and nicknamed me Fifle for my small bulge in my, <laughs> my pants. <laughs> Great Jesus. It was <laughs> high school was weird, man. So, um, <laughs> We all got a uh, Saturday school for this, and uh, it is probably one of the more embarrassing things that I ever got in trouble for in high school. Uh, thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Y'all get your little dicks in here! <laughs> what are you holding? I'm here. It's the tuba, sir. I Could you put it down for a cotton licking second? Just one moment. Sir, sir, yes, sir, but it's hard to take off alone. I'm gonna need some assistance, sir. What? Help, help your friend. Here, I, I, I can help you with that. Okay. I'm trying to instill in you, young folk, values that you will appreciate, but you seem to lack the moral integrity. Now you are the finest here, brass sir. section. And one of the best drummers in the county. I didn't want to say anything. I wait for people to come to me, and then I respond to them. That's a good way to live, son. Thanks for coming to me. So then that would motivate me to make the next step, which was to say, thank you. I'm hoping that if there is another revolutionary war, I can also tap on a drum hanging around my neck. Pray that there isn't. I was there at the first one, and it was bad. Question. Um. So, I had I I. My name's Greg. Um. I played the pipes. Yeah, Greg. So, um, 
I was hoping to play something a little more cool than the pipes. Now um, you're the pipe boy, Green. You're gonna stay on pipes. I don't. I don't want to be a pipe boy anymore. We need the pipes, Greg. Everyone makes fun of me for being the pipe boy. Because the pipes they are bigger than you. boy. I'll take the pipes. Anything but the tuba. It is way too big to be marching in this march thing. You know, what I is can't wrong do it anymore. With the hurts. tuba. I'm gonna sue. I might sue. Oh. I don't be throwing language yeah, like that around. You heard me right. You know, Listen. my mom knows a lawyer. She's, she's dating a lawyer, and I thought maybe, you know, we could figure something out. So I'll take the pipes, okay? Just wanted the best man. Call me band. the pipe piper, all right? Call me, call me the pipe piper. I'm yeah, sick of you kids funny. calling the shots. Here. Thank you. No problem. Since I don't have an instrument, do I have to fight in the next war? <laughs> Hang on, Annalie and Tim. I'd like to thank you for uh, coming to the Army office. I just need you to sign the bottom line right there. And also, you could just verify that you do not know how to play a single instrument. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Verify that I don't know how to play? Correct. And then okay. sign right down there at the bottom. Okay, just sign that right there. Great. Um, when do I get a gun? <laughs> well, <laughs> funny you should ask. I have one in my freezer. Hang out, Jill. Hey, man. Your first war? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> is it that obvious that it is? Yeah, it's pretty obvious. Okay. Your gun's upside down. Ow. You hear that? That's a sound yeah, of soldiers it sounded like falling someone in just... battle. Oh, God. What did it sound like to you? Uh, it just, it sounded like someone without a lot of emphasis just said the words, ow. That's what death sounds like, bud. Oh, God, it's worse than I imagined. I know, it's boring as hell. Gotta be careful. So, uh, you're, uh... Cow! Hey, 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 stop, stop it, stop that. Clashing sounds of battle. It's it's awful. Why do people do this to each other? To haunt you the rest of your life. Haunt your dreams. And my wife is just bitch and 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 bitch Listen, listen. Your name's Mike, right? Yeah. Mike Gettler? Yeah, that's me. Listen, um, if we don't make it out of here, I just want you to know that you're sort of funny. Don't say that! Don't you say that! I mean it. You get to tell me after the open mic. Just hang in there. Okay. Hang in there! Okay! Uh, cut to ten years later. Welcome to Teehees. Is this a free open mic? <laughs> Hello? Yeah, it's free. No, I just go right in. Well, hi. Have you ever been here before? Yes, a uh, long time ago. I'm, uh... Do you need a drink? Sure. Why don't you set me up with three? Three? Okay. <laughs> wow, you must I'm... have gone through some hell, huh? 
Band camp. I'm supposed to be meeting a friend here. Thanks. Oh yeah? Who are you meeting? Well... I don't see them, so... I guess they're not here. Well... Well, maybe you should go up and try. Maybe you should go up and try stand-up. Oh, I'm not funny. I suck. Well, there are a lot of people that aren't funny and suck, and they still do stand-up, so... I don't see the problem. No, you're right. Did I hear but I you bet suck? you're pretty funny. If you suck, you need to go to the second level of Teehees. We're a three comedy tiered Teehee club. There are three tiers? I, I'll go upstairs. Can I bring yeah, my drinks? Yeah. You sure can. Thanks. Oh, hey. hey man, I'm going to remember that guy. Oh, hey. Are you uh, new? Well, I'm old. <laughs> That's funny. My name's Annalie. Hi. Listen, um... Are you okay? <laughs> I'm fine. I work out every day. Don't I look fine? No, yeah, you look great. Really cut. I am pretty jacked and swole. Listen, um... Oh, hey. I'm sorry to interrupt you guys, but I'm sorry. I, I thought you were somebody else. You're Mike, aren't you? That's me. You don't suck. You're funny. What are you doing on the second level of Teehee's three-level comedy emporium? You think I'm, I'm good enough? Serious. You're better than good enough. Just be careful, there's some weird, haunted noises down on the first level. Okay, well, um, I have to go do, like, crazy cool Instagram stuff, so, um, it was really nice to meet you, and, uh, I'm gonna remember you. I'll remember you too. Wow. It's a roof. Third tier is a roof. Hey, Mike. Oh! Hey! You want to hear my jokes? Sure thing, man. I'm, I'm glad we made it. Hey! It's you! Yeah. We made it! Mike, we made it. The camera pulls back, and Mike is not talking to anyone. You okay, Mike? Yeah, I just thought of something funny. <laughs> nice. Well, anyway, I should see you later. I've got a lot of cool stuff to do. Like what? Now that I'm a ghost. What? <laughs> 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 Oh, yep. Uh. <laughs> wow, what a that journey. Nice. Great <laughs> job, Thomas. Posting yeah, the Facebook that, chat Thomas. for Thomas on the keys, on the music. <laughs> oh, thanks. I couldn't have done it without the amazing sound effects from, from Jill and everyone else. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break now. You still have a chance to leave us a voicemail for something you learned too late or something you really enjoyed learning, whatever it might be. Take a quick break and be back with everyone for Mark Talk. Woo! Pixie Cuts!
Shut your dumb mouths, it's time for Smart Talk. Hello and welcome to Smart Talk, I'm your host, Timothy Overton. Uh, this month we'll be discussing topics related to school, listening to your voicemails, and hearing the dumb things that you have to say. With me are my experts. Experts, are you here? Yes. Hello. Hello. Thank you, experts. We have a panel of experts with us who are all experts in their field. We'll find out what field of expertise they are experts in shortly. We're going to use your voicemails to help inspire their characters, and so we've been monitoring the voice line, and we have several voicemails from you. Thank you for submitting those. Let's get started with the voicemail. I don't know who it's from. We haven't had time to really uh, vet these. I'll try and cut it off if it gets weird. Um, but first up, Corey, why don't you listen to this voicemail with me, and we'll hear what the subjects have to say. Hey guys, this is Tim Williams calling. I had a, a story about a teacher that um, I had when my sophomore year of high school when I was taking math. And now I'm not a good person to do math or anything because, you know, math is hard and everything. And so I was getting through this class and, well, at conferences the teacher was like, if you can get a C on the final, you could probably pull out a C in the class. And so I went in, I took the final, and the teacher was like, I'll let you know when it's graded in about, I don't know, about a week or two. I go back a week later and to check my grade and everything. And when I walk in, there was this look of just utter horror on her face. And she says, and she, uh, I asked, like, hey, can I see my final grade? And she's like, are you, are you sure? And I was like, uh-oh, that's not good. <laughs> and so um, she hands me it, and I was supposed to, out of 60 to pull a C, like it was a 60-point quiz, and out of 60 points, I was supposed to get 25 out of 60. I got 3 out of 60, and there was 2 points for the name and date. And so <laughs> afterwards, the teacher was just like, um, you have all your math credits, right? And I was like, yes, I do. And she's like, you're not planning on taking pre-calc, are you? And I was like, uh, should I? And she's like, if you do, I have to, I'd say go to summer school. And I was like, nope. Not at all. And that's how I got out of math for the rest of my high school career. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you, Tim, for the call. Thank you for that voicemail. And, Chlorine, you are an expert in math. That's correct? Uh, three, two, one. Yes, I am. You got it, Chlorine. <laughs> Thank you for being here with us, Chlorine. And I was just wondering, what uh, specific field of mathematics are you most interested in? I like the type of mathematics where you there's no name for it yet because I am uh, creating it. Uh, it was something I wanted to do prior to being a teacher, but now it is a type of math where you take match sticks, but I call them math sticks, and you put them together in shapes, three-dimensional shapes, sort of like an organic chemistry combination with math. That sounds fascinating. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me here. I cannot wait to share everything I know about math. We've got more experts lined up. Next is Gandalf. Gandalf, let's listen to this voicemail. I would like to know who is the biggest Anna Belieber. I want someone to ask Annalie who she thinks the, the biggest Anna Belieber is because I think it's me. Signed, Carolyn. Now, Gandalf, you actually are the biggest Anna Belieber. And isn't it Anna Lieber? Uh, th th that is correct, uh, our gracious host. And again, thank you for inviting us to your realm. To Pleasure to have you here with us. In the knowledge of each other's expertise. Now, the question at hand, um, did she say Anna Lieber correctly? Uh, answer, no. Oh. No, she did not. But that is okay. Carolyn, my heart is with you. My fiery soul that defeated a Balrog, uh, loves and believes in you. However, I, Gandalf the Wu-Tang, am the biggest Anna Lieber. I've been to all her shows, um, every single show. I've been to all kinds of fancy dinner parties, and I am the greatest Anna Lieber. 
controversy already here on Smart Talk. Thank you for joining us, Gandalf, number one on a Lieber. We've got more experts. Next up is Ruta Bega. Ruta Bega, would you listen to this voicemail with me? I certainly will. Hello, this is Jordan. Um, I sent a text, but apparently that doesn't go through. Um, so I'm not sure if this is totally relevant to tonight. It's my story as a teacher, as an out-of-school time educator. Um, so it might not quite fit the theme. Fits but for us, Jordan. I was, uh, teaching video production at a community media center. Uh, I had a couple students. I had my students break up into two groups, and one group was going to work on uh, scripts and uh, or a storyboard or something. And uh, they went into my office because we just didn't have a lot of space. And um, I was like, don't lock this door. Uh, because, duh. And I came back later, and the door was locked, so I knocked. And they're like, who is it? I was like, yo, not cool, let me in. Um, I had to get some equipment. And I was like, hey, again, don't lock this door. For real this time. I left. Uh, later, uh, I was in the studio, and we were doing some stuff, and um, had another student uh, go and get something else from my office. And he came back and was like, ah, the door is locked. I was like, we'll tell them to unlock it. And he's like, uh, I mean, they're like, they're locked in. It won't unlock. They're locked in. So I went back, and they were like, get us out of here. Um, and so after more than an hour, uh, we ended up feeding a ladder through the ceiling tiles um, up and over the wall to my office. Tried to get them to climb out. Um, eventually had to, um, with another ladder, hand them over tools uh, to, and then have someone on the other side instruct them on how to disassemble the lock from the inside uh, for the whole handle. And um, when they finally got out, they had the brilliant idea to make a docudrama of the time they were trapped in my office. So maybe that's useful for tonight. If not, I hope you enjoy the story anyway. And I'm going to go leave my bathroom so I can watch your show. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. Thank you for that story. That perfectly fits our theme. And Ruta Bega, I wanted to ask, what are you an expert in again? Oh, uh, films. Films, of course. I have starred and directed and written so many films. Yes, I've actually seen quite a few of them. However, I believe they were under a pseudonym. Do you go by a different name yes. producing certain films? Yes. Radicio. You are mysterious as you are um, interesting, Rutabaga. Thank you for joining us. Yes, you're welcome. We've got all kinds of experts on the panel today. We have math, we've got Anna Liebers, we have film experts, but we've still got more experts here. Let's go to another voicemail. Uh, Tina, would you listen to this voicemail with me? Hi, this is Mary. I'm an Anna Lieber. I was calling to tell a story of something, not I, but my husband learned something embarrassingly late in life. So during this whole COVID pandemic, at the beginning of everything, when everyone was hoarding toilet paper, the news was doing you know, calculations of how much toilet paper a family of four would need for a two-week quarantine, all of that. And he was shocked at the number of the amount of toilet paper. And he's like, man, what are these people eating that they are pooping so much? And I was like, well, you use toilet paper when you just go pee also. He had no idea the girls use toilet paper when they pee. He's 30 and grew up with two sisters, and I was shook. I was like, <laughs> how did you not know from pop culture references, like in movies when they pass toilet paper under the stall? Like when I've asked you for toilet paper, if we're out in the bathroom, like all these times you think people are pooping? It was just <laughs> blowing my mind, and I can't even believe that he didn't know this, and it's so embarrassing. Anyway, good luck with the show on Saturday. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, caller. And Tina, would you remind us what you are an expert in, please? I am an expert in the usage of toilet paper. Thank you, Tina. 
And based off of that caller's uh, experience, are you surprised at all to hear that a grown man doesn't know what women do in the bathroom? No, I'm not surprised at all. Um, because I don't believe that the man fully understands a woman until he watches her take a piss. All right, thank you, Tina. We've got more experts on the panel. Uh, Jess Yee. Jess, Jess Yee. Jesse. Just Jesse. Jesse. Thank you, Jess Yee, for joining us. We've got another voicemail here. Okay. You got there. It's Franny again. <laughs> Uh, anyways, where do I leave off? Uh, yet again, in another psychotic rage kind of situation, uh, I checked that that balcony every single day. For you know what? I'm going to back up. Sorry about that, Jesse. That feels like a two-parter, possibly. Let's see if we can't find the beginning of this thread. Oh, yeah. Hi there. It's, it's still Franny Pack. Um, I was... Said still Tranny Pack, so that's got to mean that there's at least one more from Tranny Pack. Oh my god. Okay, as promised. I think this is it. Okay, as promised, <laughs> the fourth question, a misconception you held on for too long. Um, I would say that for this one, just the idea that like other people had the same standards as you, if that makes sense, uh, or like, yeah, like principles and like all that bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like this could apply to like one like political stuff, uh, but mainly it's just that uh, in my years of having roommates, uh, it has always been like earth-shatteringly, uh, <laughs> like earth-shattering deviation between uh, where I am, like cleanliness, and like where they are. Because, like, one, I've never had roommates until going to college, and then my freshman year, I had two roommates. One of which was a frat guy who would like work out in the room and make it all like it was just disgusting. And we lived in the basement of this dorm, uh, and I think there was like something weird about like the sewage because like in years like our my freshman year was like the first year that they like remodeled this entire dorm uh and then like years after that like it just progressively got like worse and worse and worse and i don't know if it's because like it was like a dungeon for dudes that were just like gross dudes you know or if it was because there was plumbing i'm sure that there was like a combination of those things going on anyways so he was disgusting i would hide dryer sheets all over our uh little dorm room to help combat that smell. And also, I was a, I was the mascot, and I went to school in Texas. Uh, so, like, one and two equals three. Uh, I was constantly so sweaty in that damn thing. Uh, and I'd have to, like, take it to my dorm and do it in the laundry there. Uh, anyways, sometimes I would get, like, really pissed off and, like, do passive-aggressive things. Like, I took the mascot outfit after I'd, like, been disgusting in it and, like, kneaded it into his pillow. Uh, to get, like, vengeance, because I am not supposed to do that, apparently. <laughs> uh, and then, after that, Liv, alone the next year, alone the next year, was an RA my senior year, and also lived alone. And then, uh, immediately after college, lived with my sister and her husband, which they are, like, very, uh, like, he's, like, an engineer, uh, and very, like, orderly, and things go where they're supposed to be. So that one was, like, I... I was lacking on that front. But then after I lived with them, I lived with some guys that I went to, that I like played frisbee with. Like I did not go to college with them, but they were college students uh, that played frisbee and I like practiced with them there at Drake. Uh, shout out to Duck. <laughs> uh, anyways, the guys that I lived with, it was surely the most disgusting situation that I've ever lived in. Thank you, Tranny Pack. For that voicemail, Jesse, what were you an expert in? Um, right now I'm an expert in Korean facial masks. But Excellent. I am spreading my uh, fields of study to tummy masks and booty masks. Very good. And so, have you had a lot of success with these masks? Oh my god! Like they're so good. I don't know if you can see the pores on my face. The answer is no. No, because they are working so well. Yeah, they're looking great. Thank you for joining us on the panel today. Hi. We've got one last expert joining us on the panel today. Junior, are you ready for this voicemail from Tranny Pack? Yep. Hi there. It's. It's still Franny Pack. Um, I was rudely <laughs> cut off 
by your <laughs> voice messaging machine. But anyways, where did I leave off? Uh, the Duck House. Oh, so mismatched silverware and all that bullshit. And no one would fucking do their dishes. Uh, and then it would just, like, we didn't have a, a dishwasher either. Uh, and it would get to the point where, like, me, <laughs> I, I just did all of the dishes, like, in a psychotic rage. Uh, and that was always fun. Also, one of my roommates, like, tried to get a dog. And then he was just a terrible, terrible, like, dog owner. Mm. Uh, where uh, there's, there's just too much dog poop everywhere. Uh, and... It was like the party house, too. So all the furniture was like, they found it <laughs> on curbs. And I'm fairly certain that there had to be like a rainstorm before every single one of these couches was found. <laughs> uh, anyways, also, they were like soaked in, the couches were soaked in beer and like urine and throw up because uh, people had gotten drunk and like thrown up on them or drunk and peed on themselves while passed out on the couch. Called it fun, y'all. <laughs> Uh, and then after that, I lived with Jen Cool. Shout out Jen Cool, fucking best roommate in the entire world. All right, we don't have time for that, but thank you, Tranny Pack. Uh, Junior, you are an expert on something. Could you remind me, please? It's it's chores. I'm an expert in chores. That's right. And are you proficient in one area of chores in particular? I I developed a chore chart. So I have a well, that was you. Of all the chores that I need to do, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I patented it. So uh, somebody else invented it, but I'm making the money off of the the chore chart. Oh, we are certainly privileged to have someone owning uh, such an intellectual property feat as the the chore chart. Thank you for joining us. So we have our whole panel with us today. Uh, we know all their expertise, and I'll be asking them a few questions, uh, some of life's biggest questions, getting their perspective on such issues. I'd like to start off the conversation with a little bit of a softball. We're currently in the middle of summer, but it's back to school time, and I was wondering how can people best prepare for school given the current circumstances? Uh, does anyone like to answer? Jesse, you look ready to answer. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the best way to prepare for any new situation is to just revamp your whole look, babe. Like, just go through, toss out all of last year's clothes, buy some new ones. You will feel so confident, and whether you're in school in person or in school online, people are gonna hang on us. Great advice. Dress for how you want to feel. Uh, Rutabaga. Uh, by the way, that was... 23 fingers I held up during that talk. Thank you, Chlorine. Thank you for keeping count during the panel. Uh, Rutabaga. I would just like to say and add upon uh, JC's uh, wonderful advice that you really need to be in style. And I would advise that you look to some Fellini films to get your you know, I don't know, how do you say you uh, panache, I guess, which is more French than Italian, but you know what I'm saying to you. It's a beautiful, beautiful film, sort of, like off the shoulder and heaving bosoms and some, some very uh, tight fitting clothes and just very sexy. And that will get you prepared for school. Everyone loves sexy teenagers, don't they? So true. Thank you, Rutabaga. Uh, Tina? Uh, that was... Oh, Chlorine, you got a count for us? 43 fingers. Thank you very much. is two, two times as many one fingers as we heard earlier from Jesse. I don't have a calculator on me, so I'm going to have to take your word for it. Uh, because Tina? Because math is sometimes hard. Not for you, Chlorine. Uh, Tina, do you have some advice for back to school? Yes. Toilet paper. The soft kind that doesn't scratch your butt. But always do it in the presence of a man. So he knows what it's like for a woman in the bathroom. Additionally, I would also just bring a man wherever you go. So he understands oh. the plight of a woman's life. All so in true. the bathroom. So true. Thank you, Tina. We are all about educating people, especially ignorant men. 
Uh, Gandalf. 26, 26 fingers. Thank you, Chlorine. Gandalf, do you have any advice for back to school? Yes. Most importantly, make sure that you find one Annalie Kelly at many of her various performances and get yourself added to the list of honor leaders. And then go to coronavirus and demand that you shall not pass. Thank you, Gandalf. Junior. Yeah, 17. Uh, yes, uh, for the chore chart. So I make I make a chart for every season. So Christmas season, uh, then I have an Easter season. Then I get into the summer holidays, which is pretty fun because you got Memorial Day, and then you got Fourth uh, of July, and then you got Labor Day. And so I make a chore chart. So you know those are different chores. You got to hang different things. You got to do different things. You got to decorate different trees or wreaths or flags. So I have a tour chart for uh, back to school. And basically what I do is I just make a list of all the chores that I need to do. And I get, I, I just check, I just, I check them off. And then I get paid because I'm using my own tour chart. That's great advice. Thank you, Junior. Any last comments from the panel on back to school? That, um, Junior had 31... That's oh, a great oh, question. It is so good of you to ask. Yeah. Noble and brave Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> and Anna Lieber, yeah. much like the Riders of Rohan, are a dedicated group of men, women, and people who choose not to identify their gender, who subscribe to an email list so that they may follow Anna Lee to whatever show or event that she may be hosting and or performing at. Gotcha, I'm way ahead of you, thank you. You got it. And mm. while I'm at it, I will add for anyone joining the Anna Liebers to please get on Facebook and like BNG Improv. We've got more questions for the panel. I've got a big one for you, but first I wanna hear from Tranny Pack. It sounded like he was in some distress. So I'm gonna play this voicemail for the panel and we can all weigh in. You got to say, it's Franny again. <laughs> uh, anyways, where do I leave off? Uh, yet again, in another <laughs> psychotic rage kind of situation, uh, I checked that, that balcony every single day for the next four months to see if my roommate, like, one, noticed that the dog shit was there because how the fuck could you not? And then two, didn't think about it because, again, how, how do you not get that that's your responsibility to take care of? Uh, anyways, she never cleaned it up, and then uh, I just eventually swept it up and did a lot more psycho things. Uh, maybe I'm the bad roommate. Anyways, uh, I would get into why the straight guy sucks too, but this is this is uh, voicemail number three for this all for one topic of roommate suck, which started off as <laughs> a misconception that you held onto for a lot too long. It's, wasn't it? Didn't they start? Uh, I don't even know where I started. I would. Never mind. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Tranny Pack, for your voicemail and for everyone who contributed voicemails. So, how can we help Tranny Pack, panel? Uh, Chlorine, you wrote uh, ju ju voicemail number three, seventy-two fingers. Thank you, Chlorine. I have a, I have a suggestion. Yes, Tina. Maybe he needs a man in his life. Could be. Sounded like it's there was already a straight man. Follow him around. Oh, that's true. Maybe that was the issue. If someone had been nearby with a cleaning supply, the issue could have been solved sooner. I would like to say that I think that maybe he could communicate his problems a little more succinctly, like clean up this shitty dog shit off the balcony, you whore and then rip her clothes off and make wild, passionate love to her. I doubt he has the artistry that you do, Rutabaga. You put it so beautifully. I mean, uh, I'm thinking he should just, like, totally continue with the passive-aggressivism. Like, I did think 
exact same thing to like buy the five roommates when I went through college all seven years. Like, it's just the best way to get your point across without any kind of confrontation. Also, if he can like follow me, um, that would be great because his pets are mucho bueno. Granny Pack, if you hear I that, give her a follow. Chore chart. All right, go ahead, Junior. You were talking about the chore chart. No, I'm just saying. I the the problem with the roommates, you know. Right. You, you see, Obvious solution. Straight roommates, troll roommates, annoying roommates, pooping roommates, mm -hmm. roommates that don't poop, roommates mm -hmm. that try to poop, roommates that pooped on the balcony. I think he needs a chore chart. He needs to say, this is when you poop. This is when I'm here. This is when I have my me time under the covers. This is when you have your me time, you know? Break it up. Chore chart that bit up. Sounds add good. To, That's uh, to that almost... point. To add on to Junior's point. Maybe have some specialized toilet paper associated with the chore chart. So it could be trying to pack and his is like cottonelle, because his butt is a little rough. But a cottonelle is soft on the butt. Uh, and then maybe his, his job roommates want, prefer more of a sandpaper uh, feeling, because their be. butts are well moisturized. So um, I would like to add on to Junior's uh, church art. It sounds like a film shoot, and maybe he should, you know, pull out the old camera phone and make a set list. You know, like a little shot list, like a close-up of the dog sheet on the balcony, and then we slowly pull out. You know, that kind of thing, and then has a script, and then it's it's all organized, and then they, you know, it's like a chore chart, but it's a shot list. All right. Okay, but if you if you use the chore chart, will you you know make sure that it's a re you use my registered trademark, please? Well, I, yes, I, if he wants to use a chore chart, but I, I would say if it's just a shot script, you know, for a film about the chore chart and the the thing is that the drive him off the wall. Perhaps you need to you license know. it for the film, Junior. Uh, Chlorine, can I get a quick finger count? You cramped up. Uh, well, hate to see that on the panel. We've got one last question for you all, and it's a big one. I'm asking the panel today our big question on Smart Talk. What is the meaning of life? Let's break it down, panel. Start with uh, Junior. Yep. Uh, the meaning of life. <sighs> you know, once you get that chore chart up, I think it's, it's kind of biblical in a way. You know, if you look back at Genesis, they basically had chore charts. I'm too afraid to look back at like Genesis because I'm worried I might turn into salt. Okay, okay. Well, I'm just saying, you know, they had chore charts until they fit them, and then no one had chore charts. So I think we're going back to the, you know, the original sin. Something to worry of not about. Having a chore chart. Jesse, what do you think? Meaning of life? I think it's like the time that I was locked in Johnny Depp's closet with Helen Marin doing cocaine and we looked at each other and said you just do you boo and that's how I live every day I've learned a lot of truths in that closet Tina Tina what do you think meaning of life friends with toilet paper they carry it around all the time sweet simple to the point Rutabaga, what do you think? Love, darling, love. Making love, having love, being in love, being naked and being in love with whoever, whatever. Love is love and all that love is going to fill us all up and like a, a delicious uh, dinner from mama. You know, manja, manja, the love. Rutabaga, I cannot wait for your next film. Gandalf, meaning of life. And so, the email list came to a creature, Gollum, who took it deep into the tunnels of the Misty Mountains. There it consumed him. Darkness crept back into the forests of the world. Rumor grew of a shadow in the east, whispers of a nameless fear, and the Ring of Power perceived its time had come. But this email list abandoned Gollum. But then, something happened that the Ring did not intend. 
It was picked up by the most unlikely creature imaginable. A small woman in Des Moines. Carolyn. Of the Shire. Carolyn has the list. Carolyn, if you've got that list, please give it back. Chlorine, final thoughts, meaning of life. The meaning of life is giving a high five. Because when you give a high five to somebody else's high five, it's their four erect fingers and a sideways thumb. And their five, four erect fingers and their sideways thumb. And they're coming up and they're touching with sanitizer around them, but they're still touching. Just like that. I like this a lot, especially erect fingers. I said that for you, Rutabaga. That's all the time we have on Wizard Smart Talk. Late. He always comes exactly when he wants to. I want to thank our panel for joining us. And I want to thank all of our viewers for tuning Woo! into the Chowdown and Pixie Cut stream. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And you can check out this video. Please share it with your friends on Facebook. It's the show, everyone. Give it up for the Pixie Cuts. Woo! Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Give it up for Thomas on the keys. Woo! Excellent! I want to thank Matt once again for helping us out with the graphics and thank you all for being here and for helping make this show possible. We literally couldn't do it without you, so thank you. And as always... Thanks for doing all the stuff. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have anything for the end of that anyway, so... <laughs> uh, just thanks. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Bye! Bye. Bye. <laughs> How long do we wait? Yeah. Keep I'll waving. Wait. Keep waving. And we're out. A seven